Hi, welcome back to Dr. Donovan Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be going over stridor, which can be a very scary symptom, but also an important one to recognize quickly because it can indicate a potentially life-threatening condition and might be indicating that your baby or child is working really hard to breathe. So in today's video, we're going to listen to some real life strider sounds and I'll go over how we manage stridor. But before we do that, I want us just to go over what stridor is and what causes it. So what is stridor? Well, stridor is the noise made by air being forced through narrowed upper airways. Importantly, stridor is a symptom, i.e. it's telling you that something else is going on with your child and it's not a diagnosis in of itself. So further investigation is warranted to identify the underlying cause of the stridor. So what can cause stridor? Well, causes of stridor can be divided into acute, and chronic. Acute causes of stridor or sudden causes could be a foreign body that the child's inhaled. They could have epiglottitis, which is where the epiglottis, which is the small cartilage lid that covers the windpipe, swells, blocks the flow of air into the lungs, which is normally due to an infection. It could also be due to creep, which is also an infection of the upper airway where the child gets a barking cough. And I've talked about this in one of my other videos and included some classic creep sounds, which you might want to check out after you watch this video. It could also be due to anaphylaxis where the child has got an acute life-threatening reaction to something, such as peanuts, for example. However, stridor can also be a chronic issue, i.e. it's caused by something that is not sudden. And the causes of chronic stridor vary, but one of the most common causes is laryngomalacia, which is where the baby's larynx, also known as their voice box, is soft and floppy. When the baby takes a breath, the part of the larynx above the vocal cords falls in and temporarily blocks the baby's airway, and it's this that causes the stridulous sound. I've included a full list of the chronic causes of stridor, which you might want to check out for more reading if you're interested in the description box below. But for now, let's listen to some real life sounds of stridor, and then we'll go over what you can do if you hear this sound. So now that you've heard these sounds, well, what should you do if your child develops these? Well, your child needs to be seen by a medical professional urgently. For acute cases that require urgent management, the doctor or healthcare professional will take some initial steps to stabilize the child. And these might include things such as starting high flow oxygen and alerting suitable senior specialists. So these teams might include the ENT team, so the ear, nose and throat team, which are the doctors who look after this part of the body. And they might also want to get in touch with the anesthetic doctors, who are the doctors who are concerned about looking after the airway. The team might try and suction secretions or clear out any foreign body that they can easily see in the oropharynx. They may also give adrenaline or steroids, which can be IV or inhaled through a mask or nebulizer as they feel necessary. They might want to take bloods, including an arterial blood gas, which is a sample of blood usually taken from the artery and the wrist, just to see how well the child is oxygenating. And if it's due to an infectious cause, they may, might start some broad spectrum antibiotics. In life-threatening or emergency situations, the doctors could be prepared to perform or assist with an emergency cricothyroidectomy, which is basically an incision made here in the cricothyroid just to get a suitable airway in to make sure that the child is able to oxygenate and breathe and be intubated. Acute cases of stridor should be managed in a HDU setting with the specialist team involvement. For non-emergency or the chronic long-standing cases, investigation can be done using a fiber optic nasoendoscope, which is where the upper airway can be visualized using a flexible a little tube with a camera on the end which is passed up through the nose to look at the upper airway. It's a quick and minimally invasive test and helps the medical team differentiate where the pathology lies. The health professionals may also request further imaging studies such as CT scans or x-rays to see anatomical structures in more detail. So finally, what other signs or symptoms in addition to stridor do you need to watch out for that might indicate your child is working really hard to breathe and needs to see a medical professional more urgently? Well, you want to watch out for things such as gasping for air or choking. You want to look at their nostrils. Are they flaring out and going wide when they're breathing? 
They might have sinking in of the areas in between the ribs when they're breathing, which might indicate they're working really hard to breathe. They may also have bluish looking coloured skin or pale skin, and they might be very drowsy or they might have loss of consciousness. If they develop any of these symptoms, then you want to get in touch with the nearest emergency health professionals to you. I've included loads of extra useful links in the description box. And as ever, if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a like, subscribe to the channel for loads more educational videos, and leave me a comment in the comments box below. I'd love to hear from you and interact with people who watch these videos. And if you find them helpful, please do reach out because it's always great to hear from people. Thanks again for watching. I hope it was helpful. And until next time, Bye.